Number 31. A glucose solution being administered with an IV has a flow rate of 4 cubic centimeters per minute. What will the new flow rate be if the glucose is replaced by whole blood having the same density but a viscosity 2.5 times that of glucose? All other factors remain constant. All right. So um, basically we want to find a formula that relates the flow rate to the viscosity. And the formula that looks best to me would be something like this. Okay, down here at the bottom. So it tells us that the flow rate and the viscosity are inversely related, right? In other words, if this viscosity down here, eta, right, goes up, that's the Greek letter. Uh, if it goes up, Q will go down, right? Since this lives in the, in the denominator, when this value goes up, it reduces the entire fraction, so Q goes down. Now that should make intuitive sense, right, based on everyday experience. Pretend you had, you know, I don't know, maple syrup and water in the same exact container and you both turn them upside down, what flows out faster? Well, the water will. So why is that the case if, if all other factors are the same? And we'll assume the densities are the same and all that, whatever. Um, the reason being is because the viscosity of that water is lower than the viscosity of the syrup. So the more viscous, the slower the flow. Now, what I want to do here is I want to reorganize this equation uh, so that I can put Q and the viscosity on one side of the equation. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this viscosity right here and just cross multiply it on up into the uh, or over to the left hand side. All right. So it's going to move out of the denominator on the left. Excuse me. Move out of the denominator. What's my left? Hold on. I got to look. OK. Yeah. Move the viscosity from the right denominator and bring it on up to the left numerator. There we go. So now this is Q multiplied by the viscosity. All right. And that looks like a mu to me. What's going on? There we go. Equals then P2 minus P1 times pi R to the fourth, all divided by now eight times L. Okay. Now what's important is that they're saying all of these other factors will remain constant. So if I create this formula for, let's say, glucose. So this is the flow rate of glucose. This is the, um, the viscosity of glucose. What I can now do is create a second equation. All right. Can now create a second equation for that of whole blood where I can just say this the flow rate of whole blood times the uh, viscosity of that whole blood will equal then p2 minus p1 times pi r to the fourth all divided then by 8 l and again they told us all other factors are constant so these two boxes in red are the same they're equal so if those two things are equal well guess what oops guess what these two things are they're also equal correct so let's set them equal so we have flow rate of glucose times the viscosity of glucose will equal the flow rate of whole blood multiplied by the viscosity of whole blood now they wanted us to find the new flow rate so they want us to find the flow rate of blood so they want us to find q sub b so divide out the uh, viscosity right from both sides so now we're going to have the flow rate of whole blood will equal the flow rate of glucose multiplied by the viscosity of that glucose, all divided by then the viscosity of whole blood. So now they, we don't know either of these values, but somehow they're going to have to cancel. So take this part, take this last, you know, basically last sentence. It says that the whole blood will have a viscosity 2.5 times that of glucose. So what exactly does that mean? It's telling us that the viscosity that's a mu. The viscosity of the whole blood will be 2.5 times that of the viscosity of glucose. So we can take this, right, and just plug it on in for that variable, right, for the viscosity of blood. Now, when we do that, what happens? Well, we have this equation now. We have Q sub B times the viscosity of glucose, all divided then by 2.5 times that of the viscosity of glucose. Oh my goodness, look. Boom. Boom. Goodbye. Now look what we have. We have a nice simple relationship where it says just take the flow rate of the blood and divide it by 2.5. So we can simply now plug that all in, right? So the, uh, uh, what did I do? This is not blood. I went from a G to a B. What is going on with me in this problem right now, guys? I apologize. All right, so now this is going to be the flow rate of glucose, which is 2.4.5 uh, 
0.00 cubic centimeter per minute. Now I'm not going to change the units. You can if you want cubic meter per second, doesn't matter, but this is just a simple ratio. So if I use those units up at the top, and if you notice there's no unit down here, it's just 2.5, we know that the units that get spit out will be equivalent. All right, so we're going to take 4 divided by 2.5, now we get about 1.6, right? So there's going to be 1.6, um, 0 cubic centimeters per minute. So that will be the flow rate of the blood. And that should make sense. Again, we just said before that the higher the viscosity, blood here has a higher viscosity than glucose, the higher the viscosity, the lower the flow rate should be. So this should all make sense now. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. See you next time.